This is the 2015 level 3 electricity exam. I'll just be working through question 1 for this video. Question 1. An AC circuit has a variable capacitor, an inductor and a resistor in series as shown by the circuit below. So here we have our variable capacitor of unknown capacitance, our inductor with an inductance of 0 0.150 henrys, our resistor of 10 ohms running at 50 hertz and with a voltage of 12 volts root mean squared which is essentially the average average voltage. Question 1a. Calculate the angular frequency of, of the supply. If we go to our formula sheet here we'll find that angular frequency is equal to 2 pi times regular frequency. Our regular frequency f is 50 hertz. So let's just put equals 50 hertz angular frequency is equal to 2 pi times 50 hertz. Notice that everything is in 3 SF so all our answers for this question will need to be in 3 SF, 12.0, 50.0, 3 SF, 3 SF. There we go. Equals 314 seconds to the minus 1. Question 1a. Show it. Question 1b. Show that the reactance of an inductor is 47.1 ohmed uh, ohms. Reactance is essentially it's the resistance of an inductor. Um, not quite the same, but that's a good way to think about it. Go to our formula sheet. <coughs> we should know this off by heart. But our reactance for an inductor with the symbol X is equal to the angular frequency that we just worked out before times the inductance which we're given. So we have XL XL is equal to omega times the inductance. Omega is 314, which is equal to 314 seconds minus 1 times 0 0.150 henrys. Notice 3SF, all the, <coughs> all the unit, uh, all the numbers equals 47.1 ohms. Look at that, it works out, and keeping with the three significant figures. <coughs> Next question. When the variable capacitor has a value of 1 times 10 to the negative 6 farads, the voltage across, or 1 microfarad, the voltage across the capacitor is measured at 20.9 volts RMS. So we have a voltage VC is equal to 20. 0.9 volts and it's RMS as well because if we're going to do everything <coughs> you know, we're going to do work out voltages we either stick with RMS or peak to peak we can't interchange between the two and the current flying through the circuit, uh, through the circuit is 0 0.656 amps RMS that means serious circuit currents flying through all the elements so it'll be 0.656 for all the elements calculate the voltages across the inductor resistor and draw labeled phases showing the voltages across the capacitor, inductor and resistor. When we draw these phase diagrams, the vectors need to be to scale. To scale. So first of all, we need to work out, um, we, know what the, we know what the capacitor, um, the voltage capacitor vector is going to be. It's going to be 20.9, it's a magnitude of the vector. Um, but we don't know what the inductor yet, the inductor or the resistor are going to be. But we can work them out. So what we're going to do is voltage through the inductor just using Ohm's law instead of which is equal to IR but because inductors don't have normal resistance they have what's called reactance it is XL that's times XL which is equal to uh, the current 0.656 amps no worry about RMS times the inductance which we just worked uh, reactance I should say 47 Ohms equals 3SF again for everything, 30.9 volts. And notice this will be an RMS as well, this will be root mean squared or the average voltage, RMS. <coughs> there we go. Now, current flowing uh, through the resistor, so we've worked out the inductor, now we need to work out the resistor. VR, Ohm's law again, equals IR, quite simple. I, I'm just putting the times in there, IR equals 0 0.656 amps times it says it's a 10 ohm resistor 
in arm resistor. That's what arm is equal to. I know that's already 6.56 volts. Uh, Yes, right, we've answered the first part of the question. Second part, draw the labelled phases showing the voltages across the capacitor. So let's just write VC down here as well. VC is equal to 20.9 uh, volts RMS. Uh, RMS there as well. So the <coughs> comparing all these two, all these three magnitudes together, uh, Inductor voltage is larger than all the all three voltages, so it's going to have the largest vector. So let's make sure we draw this to scale. Inductor is always so this is the resistance. Resistance is out here. Inductance leads by 90 degrees, and our capacitor lags by 90 degrees. So let's draw our inductance in. Let's label it VL. Let's draw our resistor. It has the smallest magnitude, so let's draw this quite small. The and let's draw our capacitor, which is bigger than our resistance, but still smaller than our inductance. Yeah, that looks to be smaller. And that is VC. So that answers question three. <clears throat> question four. The variable capacitor is adjusted so the circuit is now at resonance. Explain using, explain using physics principles why the current is now maximum and calculate the value of the current uh, in the circuit at resistance. So, for starters, at resonance, resonance, we've spelled that right, the reactance of the inductor is equal to the reactance of the capacitor. And if we look at it in terms of vectors across the page, if our voltage, if, our, if we set our reactances equal, that means the voltage from the inductor cancels the voltage from the uh, from the capacitor or the the reactance for the for the inductor cancelled out the reactance for the capacitor. So set our two reactances together. So the total reactance. Let's move that the way. Reactance is zero. I X is the reactance of the inductor minus the reactance of the capacitor is equal to zero, and this is because is because let's move the cross with it because oh, it's not X the reactance of the inductor and the reactance of the capacitor. Uh, 180 degrees out of phase with no reactants. The total impedance, which is just the sum of all the resistances and the reactances uh, in the circuit, total impedance, impedance. Uh, we're missing a P. C E is now uh, equal to R. I E Z is now equal to R. <coughs> and if you look on the formula sheet, we're not actually given. There's no. There's no formula. They don't, they don't give you the formula for um, linking total impedance to reactance and resistance you just have to use a little bit of trigonometry on these here um, I'll just write out the formula first so thus the impedance Z is a minimum and it's a minimum because the impedance is minimum because there's no reactance so Z ordinarily is equal to the square root of R squared plus XL minus XC squared. And because this here is now equal to zero, this just equals R. <coughs> the reason for this is when you add these two vectors together, 
they'll cancel out and you'll either get in, in this case you'd have uh, a net reactance on the inductor side and then it'd just be move this over you just add the two vectors together and then use Pythagoras to find out what this vector you know what the added vector together would be and Pythagoras's formula gives you the squares and if we squared this whole side of z squared equals r squared plus xl minus xc which is equal to r maximum current good so that's that's shown that's shown why um now the current's going to be a maximum because we have the least reactants or imp least impedance i should say max current current is I equals V over the impedance, which is also equal to the over resistance because the impedance is equal to the resistance now, which is just equal to 12 volts divided by 10 ohms. Keeping everything in 3SF as well, 12.0 volts divided by 10 ohms is equal to. 1.20 amps 3SF as well and just checking that we've answered the question explain using physics principles why the current is now a maximum we've said that the total reactance is now zero so minimum resistance or minimum impedance gives us maximum current